Welcome to episode seven of the Momxiety Club podcast. Today, I want to talk to you about boundaries, specifically setting boundaries to ensure your family has space to be its own unit apart from extended family and friends. And the earlier the boundary is established, the easier it is for everyone involved. Welcome to the Momxiety Club podcast. I'm your host, Tori Levine, and as a former mental health worker with degrees in psychology and criminal justice, I know the importance of keeping calm in difficult situations. But when I had my kids, I found myself full of anxiety. I was constantly questioning if I was doing things right or how I was messing them up now. One day, everything clicked and I made a commitment to own my anxiety so it doesn't own me. And that's why I started the Momxiety Club podcast. Each week, we'll discuss all things motherhood. So join me and let's get rid of some of this anxiety together. Hello, I'm Tori Levine, and I am your host here at the Momxiety Club podcast. Before we get started, I just want to thank you for listening. And a reminder, if you have any questions about what I discuss in the episode. I normally link to anything I reference or link to social media and all those different types of things in the show notes. So if you are, you know, rocking the baby to sleep, driving, making dinner, or any of those other things that us busy moms have to do, uh, don't worry about writing a note down. You can just come back to the episode later and click on the link in the show notes. Also, I want to give a little reminder that if you are not subscribed to please hit the subscribe button in wherever your podcast app is that you listen to. This also helps us. Our mom brains have one less thing to think about and worry about and the episodes, new episodes will automatically download on your phone. So you have them wherever you are. And if you are enjoying the podcast, please leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Having those ratings and reviews really helps the podcast get in front of more people's eyes, so more mom's eyes. And another way to get it in front of more mom's eyes to help them is also to share it. So if you have any new mom friends, please share with them. All right, and back with our ratings and reviews, I love to give little shout outs to listeners who have written a review. So today I want to shout out to MacBell.rd who left a five star review that says, A great listen for any mama. So helpful and relieving to listen to other moms experience the same struggles that I do. It helps me not feel so alone in this journey of motherhood. Love to listen during nap time. Well, I am so happy that you love to listen during nap time and that this has helped you realize that you are not alone. Okay, let's get into it. We're going to continue on a little bit from our topic last week, which was little things that we can do to make a big difference in our lives. Today's topic is boundaries. So a boundary sometimes can be a little thing that can make a big difference. So identifying and setting boundaries, especially as a new mom, can have a big impact on our experiences and mental health, both for ourselves and our family unit. To some, setting a boundary may seem so insignificant, but setting a boundary and holding the boundary sacred and not wavering from it can have a huge impact. It can also be really difficult for some people. A boundary is something that indicates a limit. It's that line in the sand. If you look it up on Merriam-Webster, you know, it talks about that limit. And if you have listened to the podcast previously, you may have heard that I am reading Dare to Lead by Brene Brown, and I'm loving it, (laughs) but her definition of a boundary is making clear what's okay and what's not okay and why. She also writes that setting boundaries is, quote, having the courage to love ourselves even when we risk disappointing others, end quote. And I love this because, again, it brings back thinking about what is best for us and not letting others run our lives, which is some of the things we've discussed in previous episodes five and six with shame and guilt and little things that can have a big impact. 
In episode five, discussing mom guilt and mom shame, there is so much in society today with moms making us feel like we have to be able to do everything. And if we're not doing that, then we're failing. Maintaining the house, having healthy home cooked meals that are organic and from scratch, you know, having the kids in a million different activities and so on and so forth. And I know that I feel guilt and shame if I try to do something for myself. We have to be able to get past the shame by being courageous enough to know that putting ourselves first at times is really what is best for everyone in our family. Because, you know, the saying, you can't pour from an empty cup and all that jazz. So I am going to assume that you are here listening because you are ready to put yourself first for the benefit of you and your family. And if you're still struggling with that cycle of guilt between time for yourself and then feeling guilty for taking time for yourself, maybe go ahead back and listen to episode five again. But sometimes we just need to get whatever we're feeling guilty about off of our chest. If you're feeling really stuck and have a lot of shame, please seek assistance on working through the shame feelings with a therapist. But sometimes when it's just true guilt that we just need to get it off of our chest so that we can move on. So for that, if you are interested, you can schedule a anxiety event session and a link to that is included in the show notes. There have been plenty of times, many in fact, where I have not been courageous enough, strong enough, or loved myself enough to set a boundary. This can involve how I've been spoken to or something that's happened or a specific situation. And what I've learned over the years working in the mental health field, as well as through personal experience, is often that we think a boundary is obvious, but unless we have clearly identified it, we can't blame the other person for crossing the line. This can be explained as a boundary error, a boundary violation, or an unspoken boundary or spoken boundary and expectation. Uh, Boundary error is where someone is not aware of the boundary. And a boundary violation is where the person is aware of the boundary, but continues to cross the line. And the same with the spoken and unspoken boundaries or expectations. I find that a lot of the times we have to go back and look. And if we feel like someone's violating a boundary, first determine if that boundary was spoken or un- or if it's just something that you're expecting. And then make sure you address it and set that boundary again. There are always boundaries that we're going to need to set, re-identify, and that will always be changing, especially as our family grows and throughout our lives. So for this, I think a great time to set boundaries for your new family unit is when you are pregnant or when you first bring baby home. Now, as with everything else, if you are far beyond that point, Starting now is not going to have any negative effect. The sooner you start, the sooner you will see results. Um, it just might be a little bit harder if you've gotten, if you extended family, friends have gotten into this kind of like little bit stepping over the line to reestablish that line and stand firm. And it is especially hard at times when other people may not understand why that boundary is being set and they might feel hurt. And setting boundaries can be uncomfortable for yourself as well as the person you're setting the boundary with. And you know what? Sometimes you don't even need to have somebody else to set the boundary with. It is setting a boundary or a limit with yourself. But what we need to understand is that it's okay if the person, the other person we're setting a boundary with, you know, can feel, feels differently than we do. But this is a good chance to practice our boundaries and our limits. And if that person says something possibly hurtful to you, you can say, you know what, I understand that you may feel differently, but it's not okay for you to speak to me that way. Or after you've set a boundary and somebody else may step over it, uh, you can say, 
look, I understand this might not be what you would choose to do, but this is my boundary and I would appreciate that you respect it. And for that reason, I say it's a lot easier to do as your child is younger, uh, as opposed to as they are older or more children come along into the family unit and rules or (laughs) limits have to be reset or changed. Because as your kids grow up, you will find that it's easier to kind of go back on something when they're younger rather than when they're older and they've already experienced this. And then it's always, well, why can't I do that now? And this and that and the other thing. So a question I recently posed in the Mom Anxiety Club membership is what are some boundaries that you set when you were pregnant or as a new mom, or were there boundaries you wish you had set before bringing baby home? The conversation that came from these questions was so valuable, and I wish I had had these answers prior to having a baby. Some example boundaries mom said they had set were having no visitors for a set amount of time after baby was born or having a few visitors in the hospital, and but then giving themselves that nesting space at home on their own. Uh, some moms had experience with their children being in the NICU, so that added a whole new level of not wanting to bring extra people in as visitors. Uh, Based on the time of year as well, moms had said they set limits on visitors because of any illnesses. And obviously right now with COVID-19, having visitors and a new baby, it adds a whole nother level of boundaries that you really want to set and stick firm to. I really loved some of the boundaries that mom set. They they called it a reverse boundary that said, if you are going to be visiting, you are going to see my boobs because they weren't going to put someone else's comfort above their brand new baby and their new family unit. And that's definitely one I related to as I, I enjoyed having our close extended family meeting our boys when they were in the hospital and newly home. Uh, But definitely as a first time and second time breastfeeding mom, you know, with each baby, it's different and you have to learn their cues, figure out how to breastfeed and with having guests there or them wanting to hold the baby, it's kind of hard to say, okay, I'm going to go over here. Let me turn around and hide myself in my own house. So, and it takes, so for some people, it takes a while to get comfortable and get into that routine of feeding a baby. And I'd love for you to learn from my experience with a, as a first time new mom, as well as I think I did a lot better the second time around because we traveled. It was also summer when my first was born and we traveled a lot and it was very challenging for me. I am a homebody (laughs) and I would have been much more comfortable staying home. So would setting a visitation boundary for friends and family be something you would have done differently? Uh, Would you, if you're planning on future children, are you going to limit visitors after their birth? Share your thoughts at hello at momsietyclub.com. I'd love to hear them. So we've discussed setting boundaries with friends and extended family. Now I want to shift a bit and discuss setting boundaries with ourselves. As I said a little earlier, because it has to do with courage to do something for ourselves, sometimes these are the most difficult boundaries to set and stick to. And now I want to go back a bit and again refer to Brene Brown and her book, Dare to Lead. Even though this book is written primarily about being a leader of an organization, I find that it can all be applied to personal life, especially parenting as kids get older, mom life in general, because after all, in most cases, we are the leaders of our houses and we set the tone for how the family functions. I have learned a lot from being a stay-at-home mom, a work-at-home mom, and a part-time working mom. And there are ebbs and flows to family dynamics depending on each person's situation and work schedules, but most of the time it falls to mom to handle the goings-on of the house, the meals, the schedules, 
the groceries, even if it's an order on Instacart, the laundry, the cleaning, and the keeping things all in line and so on. And it's a lot to keep track of. It's taken me six plus years to learn that I need to set boundaries and continue sticking to them uh, in order to let our household run semi-smoothly. I'll say it does not run. (laughs) It is not perfect and there is mess everywhere, but I've had to set limits for myself and say, I am not going to do all these things. I am going to ask for assistance, at least getting into the setting the boundary of saying, okay, we are right now before anybody leaves this kitchen, we are putting the dishes away or we're not going to take a walk and leave things out and then not get things put away later. You know, the books, before we move on to the next thing, we are going to put these books away. So those are some of the boundaries and limits I have set within our house. So are there boundaries that you need to set for yourself or your family? Can you think of any? If it's hard to think about a boundary with yourself, think about a limit or an expectation that you have set for yourself. Uh, Here's a good one. I am going to limit the amount of time I binge watch a TV show after bedtime so that I can be well rested in the morning. Uh, I'm going to not expect my house to be perfect. I am going to not expect myself to be able to run a business while teaching clients, while raising two kids, while keeping the house clean, and then also painting the entire house because that's on my to-do list. I'm going to set a boundary and say to my husband that after I've been with the kids all day, I need a few minutes when you get home. Or I'm going to say, okay, I've been working all day. Let me spend some time with the kids while you make dinner because you need some time to decompress after work. I love how some of the examples in Dare to Lead can very much be applied to as kids get older. Uh, You set the boundaries, which would be your rules for the household. And if those lines are crossed and the child has some backlash, we can say, or I understand this can be frustrating or make you angry. I will not allow you to speak to me this way. And I think that's a great one that we could use from kids being toddlers all the way up and through because toddlers definitely throw wonderful tantrums. School age children can start having some very strong feelings. And again, establishing those boundaries with how you will allow your child to speak to you early on is much easier than changing it later down the line. All right. So what boundaries do you need to state out loud to share with others? Sometimes it can be the hardest to set a boundary with ourselves because it can be hard to stay accountable to ourselves, especially when we haven't told anybody else about what expectations we have made of ourselves. So is there a boundary that you need to set for yourself? Are you having trouble holding yourself accountable? One of the great things about being part of a supportive and non-judgmental moms group is that you have those people who can help you stay accountable, whether it be accountable to keeping the kitchen table cleaned off, to allotting one-on-one time with each child, to making sure you have done one thing for yourself each day. We've had great conversations about these boundaries that moms have set and continue to stick to in the Mom's ID Club membership. And we've also had great conversations and asked for advice on how to handle people and situations when boundaries have continually been crossed or not respected. So if this sounds like a place that you would enjoy, you are invited to join the Mom's ID Club membership and ask for help to stay accountable to your own expectations. All right, we're going to wrap this up and I would love to hear your boundary stories. If it's hard for you to set a boundary, if you need some help 
setting those expectations for yourself and sticking to them? Or what types of boundaries you set as a new mom? You can share your story and tag at Momsiety Club on social media. You can leave a voicemail and be featured on a future episode at 717-461-2283. Or you can email hello at momsietyclub.com. So I'd like to thank you again for listening. And remember to subscribe, share, follow, and follow us along on social media at Momsiety Club. And please share with another new mom in your life. New motherhood can be a time of anxiety, uncertainty, and isolation. Imagine a group that you could come to from the comfort of your own home with new moms who are feeling similar anxieties, isolation, and have the same questions about being a new mom. This is where the Momsiety Club membership came from. We get weekly online moms groups facilitated by a fellow mom with a background in mental health as well as various different opportunities to get rid of our mom's anxiety through exercise, through conversation, and sharing our ups, downs, and anxieties of motherhood. Thanks for listening. Now let's go get rid of this mom's anxiety together. The Mom's Anxiety Club podcast is not intended to take the place of medical advice or therapy. If you are in crisis, call your local emergency number or the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-237-TALK.